Okay, so what we're going to look at is the roller coaster model of a series circuit. Just as a reminder from our terms here, because our objective is to understand how voltage and current behave in different parts of a circuit. So just a reminder, voltage is that fancy way we talk about work or energy, but sounds like a unit price, joules per coulomb, but we call it putting units of volts. And current is a fancy, and current it talks about how quickly charge flows by, hence coulombs per second or amps. And then resistance, if you recall, is what resists the current, makes it more difficult for it to flow. So from Ohm's law, voltage equals current times resistance. If we solve for I, we kind of look at it as the more work or energy we're putting into the system, the more current we get out of it, and the more resistance we have, the less current we get. So, suppose we had a basic series circuit. Here we have a battery supplying energy to the system, and we have resistors resisting the flow of current, and that requires work or energy to resist that current. So we have two resistors. We have a voltage provided by the battery providing work or energy. We have the resistors using that work or energy resisting the flow of current. So we want to know how the voltage in the battery compares to the voltage or the work done by each resistor and the current in each part of the resistor. So there's one basic idea in physics that can really help us through, and that is conservation of energy. No matter what, energy has to be conserved. So the energy provided by the battery has to be equal to the energy used by the resistors. And one of the labs we did before that helped us understand conservation of energy was the roller coaster. So we're going to use that as an analogy here. So a roller coaster, what provides the energy is the chain. That's what gets the cars to the top of the, top of the roller coaster. So imagine we had our battery acting as the chain, bringing all the cars to the top. So I can put little cars on here. These cars would be the charges as they get to the top of the track. And that battery is what's providing the energy or the work to get them up there. So the chain is the battery. Okay, that's our battery. That's the chain. And if we wanted to know how much energy was provided, well, think about energy, potential energy, MGH. It's just dependent on the height. So, we want to know the energy provided by the battery, or the voltage from the battery, that's related to the height. Now, each resistor converts that energy from one form to another, doing work. So, if you remember on the roller coaster, we convert potential energy to kinetic. In order for a car to get, go from potential to kinetic, to be converted, it has to go down a hill. So each of these resistors is like a hill, doing work converting from one form to another form. So resistor one, maybe it drops this far down. And then we go along the track. And then resistor two brings you back to the bottom of the hill. And then we're right back at the bottom. So that would be resistor one. That would be resistor two. So if we look at this, here's our track. And we start looking at the heights. Here's the energy that's converted by resistor one based on the height of that hill. Here's the energy converted by resistor two based on that hill. So now we can start doing some physics and look how the energies on these hills, by the resistors, relate to the energy from the battery. So, just based on our picture, notice this height and this height, they're definitely different sizes, and they're different from these, but think of conservation. The energy on this side adds up to give you the energy on this side. In other words, the energy provided by the battery is equal to the energy used by each resistor. Hence, energy is conserved. So, that means our, for our first relationship, we can say the voltage provided by the battery is equal to the sum 
of the voltage used by each resistor. Okay, next one we're going to look at. We're going to look at the current. So the current is all these little cars, right? How quickly the cars go by. So imagine we don't just have one or two of these cars. We have a lot of cars, a gazillion of these things. And it's like a big traffic jam. So imagine, here you are, you're on your way to school, you're late to school, too bad, and you're trying to go fast, but if you try to slam on your gas pedal, bam, you're going to have a problem, because you can't go any faster than the guy in front of you. And you really wish this guy would go faster, but they can't, because they can't go any faster than the person in front of them. And if you decide to be a smart aleck and slam on your brakes, you're going to have a problem with the person behind you. So no car here can go any faster than any car anywhere else. So even though you might have some spots where one might go a little bit faster, a little bit slower, but on average, everybody has to go at the same speed everywhere in the circuit. In other words, the current, the rate at which charges flow by, is the same here as it is here as it is here. So it's the same everywhere. So the current provided by the battery or through the battery is the same as the current everywhere. Okay? Alright, now let's talk about resistance. The total resistance of the circuit. So, if, you know, your intuition might lead you on a, on a correct path to this, but let's just go through and mathematically show what's happening with the total resistance of the circuit. So if we look at this, this problem, what we have is, um, I can use Ohm's law. We know Ohm's law has to work everywhere. We know the voltage from the battery has to be the current from the battery times the total resistance of the circuit. V1 would have to be equal to I1 times R1, and V2 would have to be equal to I2 times R2. It has to be the same everywhere. Okay? Ohm's law works at every single spot. So if I take our expression for the voltage and substitute these in, okay? So instead of voltage from battery, I'm going to write current through battery times total resistance. Instead of V1, I'm going to write I1 times R1. And instead of V2, I'm going to do I2 times R2. And I look at all these I's, and remember, we just said they were all the same. So if they're all the same, they mathematically cancel. And so what we're left with is finally that the total resistance of the circuit is equal to R1 plus R2. Okay? And there are our three relationships for the voltage, the current, and the resistance. Okay? In part two of this, it's going to be a practice problem. Okay? So I'm going to pause it here, you can rewind, watch it again, and we're going to do another video that's going to be the practice problem for actually solving for different parts of the circuit.